This is the plaintiff, Asia Crawford. She says she used to be best friends with the defendant, so this is a sad day to be suing her in court. But friend or no friend, she paid the woman to make her a custom wig, which was supposed to be ready in a few weeks, and it's been a year. She still doesn't have the wig and is suing for the return of her $500. is the defendant, Jessica Green. She says she made the wig all right, but the plaintiff never came to her house to pick it up. A few months later, the plaintiff called her and said she didn't want to be friends any longer and demanded her money back. There's no way she's returning her money because she doesn't work for free for nobody. She's accused of creating a hairy situation. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff hired the defendant to make a custom wig, but a year later, no wig. The defendant says she made the wig, but the plaintiff didn't pick it up. It's the case of wigging out. Thank you, Douglas. Asia Crawford, you are suing your former good, good friend, Jessica Green, for $500, 400 of it for a wig you paid her for that you do not have, and 100 in interest. What's going on? Hi, so um, I've known Jessica for about four to five years. We were best friends in high school. She said she started a business, uh, a wig business, and I decided I was going to support her and purchase a wig from her. And I paid $400 for the wig, which was supposed to be made and given to me by my birthday, which is November 4th. And okay, it, and tell me, um, the, of the 400 how much of it was for the hair, do you know? It was 300 for the hair and then 85 for um, like her service. But oh. I just gave her $400 altogether. Okay. So in November, she spent my birthday with me. I didn't get the hair. Did you ask her about it? Yeah. She told me that um, she didn't make it yet. She was going to make it the, um, the day of my birthday. But I had to go back home. I live in Brooklyn. She lives in Queens. It's not that far, but I had to go home. I know, but you New Yorkers make it sound like it's two different <laughs> countries. I've never, well, I, I, I couldn't see, see her because, you know, I live in Brooklyn. She lives in Queens. Like, it's like, you know. It's, right. not, it's not that big of a, um, a distance, but um, I had to go back home to go to work. So I told her, like, I'll pick up the hair another time. Um, I came back. I told her I was going to come back. And I told her the night before which was in December. Okay. I told her I was So that's like a month after the last time you saw her? Right. Um, the next day, I what went... What were you coming to her house for? To pick up the wig to or to hang out? To pick up the wig. Out? No, to pick the wig. Uh -huh. um, so I texted her the day of. I said, I'm here. Uh, she said she's not home. She Wait, was... when you texted her the night before, did she answer you and say, yes, yeah, that's a good she, plan? Yeah, I told her I was going to Do you have the come. text? Uh, no, I don't Okay, have go text on. anymore. The next day, I, I did come, and I told her I was at her house. She said... She's not home. And then I was like, okay, well, when, you, when will you be home? She was like, um, not anytime soon. So I said, okay, fine. I went to my other friend's house. I gave her the entire day. I stayed in Queens um, until about 8 o'clock that night. I kept texting her, asking her if she was home. She told me no. And then I just went back home. And I didn't see her again until January for her birthday. She came to Brooklyn. Um, we spent Did she her bring the wig? No. Okay. Well, we kind of spent her birthday together, and then I went back home with a few of my other friends, and I didn't see her again until today. Um, I texted her in January, at the end of January, that I didn't want to be friends anymore because... Why? Well, I feel like Jessica um, started to turn into, like, a, a different person from when How the person... So? Well, when I first met her, she was, like, really nice, really sweet, um, very shy. She wasn't really that outgoing. I was her first friend in school. Like, I was the first person to speak to her. Um, and then over time, she just started to become, like, very, I don't want to say, like, nasty, but... You feel like you were her first friend and she ditched you for other other friends? No, not even that she ditched me. It was just, like, she was just starting to become very, like, uh, it just wasn't good energy to me. Like, her, Yeah, but why? Her, why? I'm, I'm curious. Um, like, her birthday, she had a party at an, um, she had an event. It was at a 21 and older club. I'm not 21. So she went into the party and left me and a few of our other friends outside and was just like, okay, we'll see you later. Like, you can't get in. Okay, bye. And it was just like, that kind of stuff kind of like turned me off. So I was just, I wasn't really um, okay. feeling the friendship anymore. Why, why is the wig sitting on that head in my courtroom? Why did, why did you guys have to see me to transfer the wig? What's going on? Oh, I didn't bring it to transfer it. It's more just to show that I did provide a service. She gave me money for a service, and I did provide it to her. It wasn't nothing like I didn't want to give it to her. When or... did you complete the wig? Um, in November. I cannot remember exactly what Did day. you guys hang out in November? No. I did don't... you hang out in December? I did, I think, I can't remember. Was honestly. she ever at your house and the wig was right there? 
I want to say she came to my house, but I really am not completely 100% sure. But I do feel like we did hang out maybe once or twice. Was she at your apartment after you made the wig any time between November and when did you call her and say, I don't want to be friends? I told her in January. The okay, between January. Was she at your apartment and the wig was completed and you said, hey, there's the wig and she didn't take it? Yes. When? I cannot, I'm not going to be, I can't give you an exact day. But I just know that we did hang out after the fact and made plenty jokes about the fact that she's been with me and hung out with me and didn't leave with the wig. Really? Um, can I say something? Yeah. So I do remember that I Have went, you seen the wig before? No. This so is, is she lying it. when she says that you were at her house and the wig was com completed? Yes. So is it ever a good idea to do business with friends? No, it's not good unless you have a signed contract that you both agree that you will both contribute properly. Fair enough. If, even if you have a signed contract, does it make sense to do this with friends? I think it's completely fine depending on the friend and how much you trust that person and the relationship. Or how much you want a friendship when the thing goes into the toilet, right? Yeah. All right. Going inside the courtroom. What happened with your friendship? Um, honestly, as far as on my end, I didn't really see any issues. It was more of just how she felt about it. Um, she wrote me in February, and she texted me and said, I don't Does anybody think have any of the texts? I do. I, have I thought you said you didn't have the text. No, I didn't have the text message of, of me telling her that um, I was outside her house. I have a lot of text messages that Hand say... Hand me the text. Let me look through them. Go ahead. What were you saying? Here you go. Um, yeah, she wrote me in February and told me that she doesn't think we should be friends anymore. And then we kind of spoke about that... Um, did you speak about okay. it in person or did you text back and It forth? was all text. I haven't seen her since those text messages. Um, Guys, also, sir, can, let me, let I'm just, sorry. Sorry. how old are you? I'm 19. How old are you? 20. I, I need you to listen. Look at me, look at me in the eye. Texts are for, what time do you want to meet? I'll see you there. I'm running 10 minutes late. When you're going to break someone's heart, you don't do it over text. If you're upset at someone, you don't do it over text. You talk to each other. Because when you do it over text, you lose this. This, trust me, you will eventually get older and realize important things like breaking someone's heart does not happen over texts. You really need to talk to each other and understand what's bothering each other and then you feel bad. She'll feel bad about what you feel bad about and then you don't lose a five-year friendship. Well, you guys, like, you, you grow friends on trees, it doesn't matter. Do you have this in your phone? Uh, not on this phone. I had another phone at the time. And I okay, but I like seeing texts in the phone, so I know they haven't been altered. Do you have the phone with the text, or you didn't bring no. it? Now, I'm seeing texts where in eight, at the end of April, so that, you're text? saying that when you get your, uh, you're starting a new job, and when you get your first check, you'll send her the money. What happened there? Um, I didn't work a lot. I thought that I would have been working more hours when I first started that job, but I didn't work as much as I thought I would. Um, I maybe worked. Yeah, but you never texted her to say I need more time or anything else like that, right? I believe we did actually speak one more time about it. See, your lack of communication is what caused a riff in our friendship in the first place. Had you said that this past Monday or even communicated with me all these last three months, we could have come up with some sort of agreement. Wow, we're all the way up to July. And you tell her, oh, I got a new job, I'm working at Pink, I can give you 200 from the first check and 200 from the next, and she's like, okay, love, and this is in August, you know, trying to be peaceful and get her money back. And that's the last you communicate with her in August, so she files suit. You want the wig? No. no. Um, there's like four months of you stringing her along, telling her you're going to pay her back. What am I supposed to do with that? Um, it and that's what she relied on in not filing suit all this time and getting the wig back or getting her money back or whatever. It wasn't necessarily about stringing her along. I did get a new job, and I had every intention to give her the money back. Okay. But Your intentions cannot be deposited in a bank. I understand It doesn't that. look like you had any. Did you pay her $5? No. Did you pay her $20? Did you pay her 50? Did you pay her anything? You didn't pay anything, so it doesn't look like you had intentions. It looks like you're talking smack. And the worst part is that it, there was probably a, a chance to salvage a friendship during all those months, because there was, you know, we're talking about a lot of months. We're talking about she didn't file suit until almost a year after she's been asking you for her money back, and you've been saying you're going to give it to her. Eight months is a long time to put it on the back burner, especially when she's being completely civil about it and saying, it's all right. Your lack of commun, you know, it's bothering me that you never called to say you weren't, but it's okay if you need more time. And then it's, hey, I haven't heard from you. It's been another three weeks. Apparently, that's how you guys settled it, that you would return the money. So I'm going to respect that settlement. I'm not going to order $100 in interest. I'm going to order the 400 returned, and I'm going to order prejudgment statutory interest since the last time she authorized a delay, which was August. Um, that's how it's going to work. Good luck, folks. Thank you.
So the plaintiff will get $400 back plus interest. You know, this seems like such a simple thing. The friendship is almost the more important thing here altogether. You've known each other for so long. What do you think about what the judge just said? Um, I just kind of feel like um, she paid for a service and I provided it for her. I shouldn't have to pay someone back for a service that I actually did provide to her. And I just kind of feel like it just it didn't feel necessary to me. What, how did she respond when she called up and said, I don't want to be friends anymore? Um, it did hurt my feelings because we were <laughs> friends for a, a while and yeah. like really close friends. But, yeah. I mean, things happen. People grow apart. All right. Sorry about that. You think you'll ever get back together? I mean, what, what do you think? I don't know. You don't know? Time will tell. Okay. Thank you very much. You must sign a few documents. Now here comes the plaintiff. You know, a lot of people may be wondering, why did you want a wig anyway? You look fabulous. <laughs> thank you. Um, I wanted more so to support her business and be a you know, a good friend for that to support yeah. her business. But also, I wanted to straighten my hair, and I don't like to damage my actual hair, so I thought yeah. maybe it would be a good idea. Do you want it to be longer? Yeah. You did? <laughs> I actually cut my hair, so I wanted it to be a little bit longer than what it is. Oh, well, fully. Well, it's growing out now, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, how did you get nerve to call up to her, hey, I don't want to be friends with you anymore, right? That's tough. Yeah, I mean, I kind of just felt like she wasn't giving me the kind of friendship I deserved, and okay. I felt like it was time for us to separate. All right. You think there's any hope to rekindle a friendship? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Well, time will tell. Thank you so much. All right, you must sign some documents. Story of a sorry friendship there, Harvey. What do you think? Okay, Doug, well, look, the key to this case is that they had already settled their dispute, and the judge simply enforced the settlement.